morning the earth says hello going for a circuit week training today or more like it's the perfect weather for sleeping in the weather has been a little early the weather forecast says it's sunny but then just as i was about to make my real the sky turned really dark and it started pouring but then and the rain just suddenly stopped and really feeling the effects of climate change but no bad weather is stopping me from working out I'm kidding, it's a lie I've totally cancelled my studio class and sleep in during this perfect rainy weather if there isn't a late class cancellation penalty so here I am for a circuit session that includes but not limited to heat workout exercise to get free and lovely weekend morning Dead bit tired. But the silver lining is that I felt good afterwards. A bit feeling the post workout burn, but it's a friendly reminder that fats are burning away. Plus, happy hormones and endorphins pumping. After a few moments of procrastination before shower time, finally, it's time to replenish energy and reward myself. I'm gonna be. Ah! So I have some leftover brush. Over brush. Brush. Brush bun here and today I'm gonna attempt at making the iconic delicious shack burger the shack burger at the shack among all the burgers I've tried in the past years it remains and takes a spot on my favorite burger list but it's only negative it's price while I don't know the exact measurements for what went into the original recipe the internet does as a Shack Burger fan, I just had to shake it up and today, welcome to my kitchen where yams are born. Yeah, here's how I make my Shack Burger. So the key to the Shack Burger is the sauce and I'm gonna start with the Shack sauce because the success or failure of this recipe is dependent on it. These are all the sauce ingredients we will be using today. By the way, are you thinking what are these? Yes, sauce extras from all the takeouts I had. A real life saver and an out of sauce supply and well, this is one of those things. To start, first we are going to begin by grinding half of an onion. Two, you have about a scoop of onion puree. Then, and mayo sauce that's mandatory for every burger recipe. Don't mention it, add as much mayo as you like and follow with a spoonful of mustard. In the kitchen, accidents happen all the time, but it's okay. Just like life, we move on. And moving on, a spoonful of chili sauce. Now, the last item on the recipe is actually Worcestershire sauce, but I don't have it on hand. How then? Fret not if you are like me, who survive for minimum pantry supply. I have solution. If you do have Worcestershire sauce, add about a tablespoon to the mix. But if you don't, here's how to make your own Worcestershire sauce at home. You need tomato sauce, soy sauce, and black vinegar. In Vola, you will get a Worcestershire sauce alike and mix it in with the shack sauce base. This tastes exactly like the shack sauce in the shack burger. At least 99% similar for sure. For the beef patty, I'm using 100% ground beef, 80 to 20% meat to fat ratio, forming it into a ball. Next, we are going to press it down into beef patties. Ah, you may recognize it's the Dagona candy presser from this week game here. Reason being, I'm too cheapskate to buy a real burger press, but the Dagona seems like you would double as a great burger press. In a way, it's not all that different from molding candies to molding patties. You worked really well. Now we are all set, let's get cooking. Turn on the heat to medium high, heating up the pan, melting a slice of butter in until it's fully melted, stirring occasionally. Once that's done, add in butter to let it soak up all the nice buttery goodness. After transferring the burger patty to the pan, season lightly with salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. 
Once the patty is about 60-70% to 70 cooked, add a scoop of Swedish shack sauce, followed by a slice of cheese. Now, here we go, the finale. Stacking the patties on the toasted bun, then the rest of the burger toppings. Well, due to limited kitchen supplies, it's only lettuce leaves today. Most of the time, I can't use a whole lettuce head and always end up with leftover leaves. The fact of the matter is, leafy leaves or any other leafy vegetables is that they tend to go back quickly. Don't let them go to waste. In case you haven't heard about this amazing tip on how to store your extra lettuce to get them fresh, here's how you can delay the rest of your lettuce from turning soggy. Wonky. Talky wongi. Using two toothpicks, poke into the lettuce, but not 100% sure behind the signs as to why it works. My speculation is that you mix it thing that is still growing, which inhibits rotting. Who knows? Lastly, wrap a paper towel around the lettuce for it to absorb all the excess moisture and it's gonna stay fresh for another two weeks or more. You are welcome. Well, I ran out of tomatoes at home, so there's only lettuce. But anyway, it's fine. I don't really love tomatoes in burgers. I prefer tomatoes cooked, actually. Yeah, but anyway. Whoa, it's huge. I'm not joking. This is really good. Oh. I'm not saying this because I made it, but this is so good. I mean, if you are a fan of Shake Shack, you need to try this sauce and remake this at home. You'll be shocked. It's relatively simple to make, actually. In the meantime, I'm just gonna enjoy my burger.